Well, frankly, I think it is really something quite irrelevant to the context of what was going on. Spain was celebrating a, let's face it, magnificent win in a great match against England. They've had a great tournament, probably the best team of the European Championship that we've just seen play out on our screens over the past month. And then a fool has to sully that win by making this foolish political reference to Gibraltar, to our land, to an attempt to usurp our land through this chanting. And then some politicians join in, like the mayor of, uh, of Madrid. And frankly, I think this is really just unacceptable. It's disgraceful. It's mixing politics and sport in a way that is unfair. It's unconscionable. And I think that you know, when you have somebody like this, a football player, making that chant, they have absolutely no idea what they are saying, which shows you that a great part of the Spanish population is just unfortunately brainwashed in relation to Gibraltar. They have no sentient thought about what it is that they're saying. The usurpation of the land of a people is something that for them is just a charm that they enjoy. You made some very strong comments on X. You uh, said the chanting had fascist overtones. And we hear it occasionally from fans, but what impact do these words have when they're repeated by such high-profile figures? You have to remember what the genesis of this chant is. This comes from the time of a fascist dictatorship, the time of a mass murderer. Franco is a mass murderer. The current Spanish government have no uh, problem in calling him a mass murderer, a dictator, and a fascist. They are undoing all of the elements of fascist Franco Spain, this is one of the elements. But there's no point you know, pretending to be anti-fascist and anti-Franco and then adopting one of his chants because this modern incarnation is a Francoist fascist chant who would, you know, the, the person who would at the same time as he might sign death warrants might also use Gibraltar as the, the way of deflecting attention from the problems that Spain has traditionally had. Well, you know, that's what is being adopted by the people who now make this chant. That's why it's important to remind people that whether it's the doctrine and the dogma at the United Nations, which comes from the times of Castilla and Franco and that fascist mass murdering regime, or this chant that people have in indoctrinated into them when they are young. It all comes from the same genesis. This is the time of Mussolini, of Hitler, and of Franco. That's what we're talking about. And Franco's chant is the one that's surviving. We know that the, the GFA is preparing to lodge a complaint with UEFA about this. Will you be taking up the matter politically at all? Well, it's important that it is the GFA that takes this action. We talk about politics and sports not mixing, so we must highlight on behalf of the people of Gibraltar how we feel. Under the UEFA statutes, I think the GFA are more an appropriate complainant than the government of Gibraltar, but let's be very clear. The reality is that today and tomorrow, and for centuries and millennia to come, Gibraltar will remain a British. And after the government of Gibraltar and the GFA beat UEFA in court, at the Court of Arbitration for Sport, Gibraltar is a separate UEFA jurisdiction. We are our own British sovereign territory, and that will never change. And as the Court of Arbitration for Sport said in the UEFA Gibraltar case, the fact that the Spaniard might say that the sovereignty of Gibraltar should be Spanish does not bring the sovereignty of Gibraltar into dispute. It is indisputably, according to the Court of Arbitration for Sport, British. But it's not really going to do anything for the trust between the two nations. It's our border, Gibraltar, Spain, that's been um, uh, subject to negotiations under this treaty. It's not really going to have a great impact on trust, is it? Look, this has absolutely nothing to do with the treaty. It's got nothing to do with the people who sit across the table in these negotiations. We've built up negotiating trust. We've also seen how we've had difficulties in that negotiation. None of those difficulties have anything to do with a foolish footballer getting up and saying something as stupid as he said. That is not going to affect the relationships around the table. It's not going to affect the chances of a treaty or the chances of not being a treaty in the event of us not being able to ensure that we can all be satisfied with our respective red lines are not going to be crossed. But tomorrow, just like yesterday and just like millennia from now, Gibraltar will be British and nothing else because Gibraltar belongs to us. Gibraltar, Yanito, siempre.